On this episode, we talk about air ride, secondary air faults, clicking noise under the dash, and broken belts. This is episode 22 of the Ask Tap Show, where we answer your Volkswagen and Audi questions. Let's get into the show. Garrett via Facebook has air ride questions. Is it worth the on and R? Not going to track it, spirited driving sometimes on curvy roads. Manual air with performance series. I know nothing about air, so help me out if you have any experience. Thanks. P.S. I live in New Jersey and our winters are sometimes brutal. Anything you guys can tell me about temperatures from 30 degrees Fahrenheit and lower? Garrett, so air ride on an R, uh, or really any car in general, is it worth it? It really depends on what your goals are. If you want air because you want to be able to lay your car out when you park it or just ride low in general, then air is a great option for you. Keep in mind, air is an expensive choice, so if you're comparing air versus coilovers, you have to really want the adjustability to get the return, uh, and that's a really a personal preference. Now, when it comes to doing a manual setup, when you install manual setups, you have to run lines from each air bag into the car. The airlines actually run to a manifold that sits in the car where the actual switches are. That is a challenge also, a lot of times depending on uh, the amount of space you have and the fact that you can't kink those lines very hard so they have to have smooth bends so it really limits your location as well as makes the install significantly more difficult based on the, the fact that you have to run eight lines from the outside of the vehicle inside the vehicle. So what um, actually Max here uh, he does a lot with air, so he has a lot of information on that. What he recommended is if you go to another setup that ha basically uses a manifold that allows you to have a manifold outside the car but electronic switches inside the car, that is your best option because it gives you the uh, ease of not having to run all those lines inside the car, but you still have a less expensive setup than some of that, those top tier setups uh, to make it more affordable. So. The next thing is for cold weather, air is something that uh, Max mentioned that there is a inline setup that's basically a water trap that you would want to drain. Now some kits are going to come with that and some kits are not. So you're going to want to make sure that if you get an air setup and when you're in those cold climates that you get one that has that air trap or add it on there and then make sure that you drain that periodically because you don't want water in your air lines because it could freeze and cause you some issues uh, through the winter. I'm trying to get a step-by-step -step on how to remove the secondary air injection and repair any issues that may cause a check engine light to be thrown. I recently installed an aftermarket cold air intake and I didn't get the check engine light until two to three weeks after installation. So 2.5 engines have some issues around secondary air systems. They're pretty basic systems. There's only a few components that are made up of them. I actually put together an article about this last night uh, before answering this question to give people a more in-depth look at this system just because there there's a lot of intricacies to it but the basic gist of it is your intake is probably very unlikely to have caused any of the issues around your secondary air faults the intake does have a hose that attaches to it that goes to the secondary air system but essentially all that is is a hose that connects to the air box or intake to filter air coming into the secondary air pump. So that's not really going to cause any problems unless you didn't connect it and got some junk down there and it locked up the pump, which if you don't connect a filter or breather of some kind to that, that uh, line, you could potentially have some contaminants get in there, damage the pump and then lock it up and then it won't function anymore. Most likely you have something else going on in the system and either the you have a problem with the pump being bad, the combination valve, there's also a pressure sensor in the system. So take a look, we have a link, we'll put a link to that here and offer you more information about the secondary air system on 2.5 engines. A user on VW Vortex says, I apologize if this has been asked, but I can't find exactly what happened with my car in previous threads. I have a 2007 GTI and I was driving home from work and stop and go traffic when the traffic broke up. I began to hear a noise but couldn't exactly tell what it was due to other traffic sounds. I get maybe a quarter of a mile and I hear this terrible belt-like squeal. My battery light turned on and the car died. All the power is working but 
I won't start or even turn over. After I popped the hood, I noticed a little bit of smoke and a bad smell, nothing like I smelled before. Has this happened to anyone? So, FSI engine, the squealing noise you're hearing is almost certainly related to the belt. It sounds like the belt either was thrown or something locked up in the system to throw the belt. So most likely it sounds like something probably locked up when, so what you're hearing was one of the pulleys in the system locked up, the belt conti continued to spin, which is why the battery light came on because it was no longer, the alternator was no longer spinning. And then eventually all that friction wore through the belt and threw it off and snapped it. So what you're smelling is burnt rubber from the belt riding on all the pulleys that were spinning that you know while something else was locked up and the belt wasn't moving so what you would want to do is check everything in your system check the alternator check all the idler pulleys ac compressor make sure they're spinning most likely you're going to find one of them that is locked up and in which case you'll need to replace that component and obviously the belt itself a user on youtube says I have a 2008 VW Jetta, and when I start my car, it makes a rapid clicking that sounds like it's coming from the passenger airbag. It will stop, but whenever I put the car in reverse, it does the rapid clicking sound again. Is this the purge valve or possible anti-shutter valve? My car won't start once I put gas in it, and I have to continue to start it, which takes a while. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so the noise you're hearing under the dash is most likely related to one of the flat motors. Basically what happens is there are actuator motors that move the different flaps in the heater box or and or AC box to adjust either temperature or recirculation or, or one of those things. And what happens is over time, they'll, they'll fail and you'll start to hear under your, under your dash. And it's one of those motors. You'll have to track down and figure out which one it is. If you have somebody with a VAGCOM, I think they should be able to go into the, your uh, climate system and probably pull the fault because a lot of times they'll throw faults related to which motor they have a problem. And it's going to be like a V number, uh, like a V120 motor or something like that. And then that should help you track down specifically what motor is having an issue. And then you'll have to replace that motor. Thank you for watching episode 22 of the Ask Dapp Show. If you want your questions answered, shoot us an email, info at shopdapp. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up or subscribe.